The belief of green tea as a wonder weapon against diseases dates back thousands of years. I've talked about it in relation to chronic disease, but what about infectious disease? Interest in the antimicrobial activity of tea dates back to a military medical journal in 1906 suggesting that servicemen fill their canteens with tea to kill off the bugs that caused typhoid fever. However, this effect of tea was not studied further until the late 1980s when tea compounds were pitted against viruses and bacteria in test tubes and petri dishes, but what we care about is do they work in people? I had dismissed this entire field of inquiry as clinically irrelevant until genital warts. External genital warts caused by human wart viruses are one of the most common and fastest spreading venereal diseases worldwide. Patients with external genital warts present with one or several cauliflower-like growths on the genitals and or anal regions, considerably impairing people's emotional and sexual well-being. But rub some green tea ointment on, and you can achieve complete clearance of all warts in more than 50% of cases. Wow, if it works so well for wart viruses, what about flu viruses? Works great in a petri dish, but what about in people? Tea drinking school children do seem to be protected, but you don't know until it's put to the test. If you give healthcare workers green tea compounds, they come down with the flu about three times less often than those given placebo. In fact, just gargling with green tea may help. While a similar effect was not found in high school students, gargling with green tea may drop the risk of influenza infection seven or eightfold compared to gargling with water in elderly nursing home residents where flu can get really serious. Unlike antiviral drugs, Green tea appears to help by boosting the immune system, enhancing the proliferation and activity of gamma-delta T cells, a type of immune cell that acts as a first-line defense against infection. Subjects who drank six cups of tea per day had up to a 15-fold increase in infection-fighting interferon production in as little as one week. But why? There's actually a molecular pattern shared by cancer cells and pathogens, and with edible plant products such as tea, apples, mushrooms, and wine. So eating healthy foods may help maintain our immune cells on ready alert, effectively priming our gamma-delta T cells that can then provide natural resistance to microbial infections and perhaps tumors. I guess I shouldn't have been so surprised. Tea, after all, is a vegetable infusion. You're basically drinking a hot water extraction of a dark green leafy vegetable. Billions of pounds of seaweed are harvested each year, the consumption of which has been linked to a lower incidence of chronic diseases, both physical and mental. For example, women who eat more seaweed during pregnancy appear to be less depressed, and have less seasonal allergy symptoms. But the problem with these cross-sectional correlational studies is that you can't prove cause and effect. Maybe seaweed consumption is just an indicator that they're following traditional Japanese dietary customs in general, which has lots of different aspects that can protect against disease. To know for sure if seaweed could modulate immune function, you have to put it to the test. So typically researchers start out like this, in vitro, meaning like in a test tube, which makes for quicker, cheaper, easier experiments. Take eight different types of seaweed and basically make some seaweed tea you can drip on human immune system cells in a petri dish. It was studies like these that showed that the seaweed wakame, which is what you find in seaweed salad, can quadruple the replication potential of T cells, which are an important part of our immune defense against viruses like herpes simplex virus. Yeah, but no one actually tried giving seaweed to people with herpes until this study. 
They gave people suffering from various herpes infections about two grams a day of pure powdered wakame, which is equivalent to about a quarter cup of seaweed salad. And all 15 patients with active herpetic viral infections experienced significant lessening or disappearance of symptoms. This included herpes virus 1, the cause of oral herpes, which causes cold sores, herpes virus 2, which causes genital herpes, herpes virus 4, also known as Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mono, and herpes 3, which causes shingles and chickenpox. There was no control group, though, but with no downsides, why not give it a try? Anyway, if you're on a date and they ordered seaweed salad, you might want to ask them about their history. Researchers also found that wakame boosted antibody production, so might it be useful to boost the efficacy of vaccines? The elderly are particularly vulnerable to suffering and dying from influenza. Now, the flu vaccine can help, but ironically, the elderly are less likely to benefit because immune function tends to decline as we get older. So they took 70 volunteers over the age 60. This is the level of antibodies they had against the flu virus at baseline. And what you're looking for in a vaccination is to get a two and a half fold response. So we'd like to see this get up to at least 25 to consider it an effective response. But they only got up to here. Give them some wakame extract, though, every day for a month before the vaccination, and they jumped up to here. They used an extract rather than the real thing because they needed to put it in a pill so they could perform this randomized, placebo-controlled study. It's kind of hard to make a convincing placebo seaweed salad. It is hoped that the popular seaweeds eaten daily in Japan, though almost unknown everywhere else outside of Japanese restaurants, will start to be more widely consumed for possible immunopotentiation, boosting immunity, and for attenuating the burden of infectious diseases in the elderly.